Hey everybody, welcome back. Duck. I originally planned on doing this as a live, but apparently YouTube Live takes a while to actually upload. It says 24 hours, but for access, apparently it takes longer. So this is gonna be recorded. You can still put stuff in the comments, but I won't be answering live because it's not live. That is still my 1987 Dodge Raider. It hasn't changed into anything else. I'm still Fox and Fix It. I haven't changed into anything else. And today, I've got to put a starter on that thing. Quiet, you. All right, well, anyways, the airplane's not gonna go away, so we'll just do this. Actually, it is going away slowly, at probably 300 plus miles an hour. On the 1987 Dodge Raider, with the 2.6 engine that this one has, the starter is down there. That's the starter, right there. Now, the electricals you get from the top, it is uh, this black and yellow plug that I already pulled off accidentally but you know it's off so why put it back on then you've got your big wire going to the battery which is this one right here your heavy gauge that goes over to positive and then what holds this thing on is two bolts and one of them is right up against the firewall here uh, and comes in from the bell housing side genius and the other one is on the bottom right there that is the threaded opening that the other one comes through. And it also comes from the transmission side, which means to do this job, you either need four elbows or you gotta take the skid plate off. One of the many skid plates, which I've already done because I don't have four elbows. Okay, so what I'm talking about is right there, that is the bottom bolt for the starter where I've got my 3 8 ratchet. Starter, there, ratchet, there. 14 millimeters is what you need. But before you do any of this, make sure you disconnect the battery. Positive and negative, please. Thank you. I've already taken the liberty of loosening the top bolt because you can't see it and I can barely move it and it took a while. But I'm now gonna take this one out. Maybe by hand, maybe not by hand. I can't even get a ratcheting wrench onto this. I can't even get my forearm with one elbow onto this, really. <laughs> Genius idea. I love it. All right, now, last thing here that I guess I could have done before I took all the bolts out was get the big wire off of here. It is a 13 millimeter, and you can get a wobble and extension on it. So I guess we'll thank our lucky stars for that. That's the nut for it. Ta-da. Then you take the big wire off. Come on, there we go. This bracket right here, this is the one I flipped so I could use the transmission shifty cable on the bracket here which is on the wrong side of the carburetor because this isn't quite the right carburetor for the vehicle however because i did that now it's in the way of the starter so on this application i'm gonna have to take my bracket off to get the starter out but if this was in the stock location you would not have to do this there and just move this up and out of the way and that should give us plenty of room now you can see the starter and everything look at it right there straight shot why couldn't they put the bolts on from the front all kinds of things are falling out today there you go this is one i got from the parts store i can't read the number because it's backwards but it starts with an r r six one two four two three b i think i read that backwards if i did let me know in the comments if i read that wrong let me know in the comments i think i did pretty good backwards reading there Anyways, they look completely different, uh, so that's not a good sign. This has a reman sticker on it already, so maybe it was wrong, and what we're going to do is right. Terminals look the same, so that's good. And also, if you look at it this way, the mounting points and orientation appear to be the same. Nose cone depth is the same. We're going to go ahead and say that it is the same price. Now, on any starter you get, be it reman or brand new, one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that the nuts that hold these two copper studs on are tight because I've gotten some over the years that are not tight and it really makes you not happy to install it only to figure out that they're not tight. These are tight and now we know they're tight. And if you see here, here's the flywheel teeth. They all look to be in pretty good shape to practically new, I like that. This is our big terminal. As you can see, I just wiped some dirt off my finger, but it's already in really clean shape, so there's no need to wipe that down. However, if this thing was corroded or really, really icky or any technical term that should go along with icky, clean it before you put the starter in. And here's upper bolt, bottom bolt, and this has like a shim plate 
or mounting plate, sort of like Fords do. Not a fan of that, but whatever. I'm kind of having to go, I feel. And I can't really feel because I've already cut off the circulation in both arms. Ah, oh, the tingles. That's definitely sort of started. I've got to try to get my second elbow through here between the torsion bar oy, and the drive shaft. The front drive shaft, at least, not the rear drive shaft. At least I don't have to go that far back. Although it's a short wheelbase, so it's practically the rear drive shaft. What would be the problem here? There we go. Oh, 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 oh. Now rotate a little bit. Come on. There we go. Oh, why does it find that? It's a starter. It could be coarse, but it'd be okay. All right, that should be enough to hold that in place while I get the upper one actually started for reels this time. I have been able to finally get something on this top bolt. What I needed is a 14 millimeter wobble socket with a wobble extension and a shorty flex head 3 8 ratchet. And then I can turn it about an eighth of a turn at a time, taking about 20 minutes to get this thing going. Let me show you the setup. Here's my shorty ratchet. The extension's right above that, going up here to where that starter is. And you can't see anything after that because there's no room, like I said. Don't slip off of there. Don't you do it. Oh. <laughs> Give me my socket, you piece of crap. Watch your head. There's the socket. All right, let's go up top where there's room to play with things and hook electricals up. You may or may not know this, but most of your import Japanese stuff, at least in the 1980s, uses even numbered metrics. Sometimes it's called Japanese metric, and there might even be another difference to Japanese metric that I'm not aware of, but I've always heard it slangily referred to as Japanese metric, just saying even numbers. 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Except this nut that holds the big starter wire on, 13 millimeter. And your oil drain plug bolt on a lot of stuff is 17, 19, 21. I don't know why those are the only things that seem to be odd size metric, but is what it is, you're gonna need a 13. If this isn't clean, go ahead and clean it before you put it back on. Since this one's clean, I don't need to clean it before I put it back on. Split lock washer right there. And you got your 13 millimeter nut. And spin it down by hand as much as you can. Sometimes they'll have an actual tab that sort of sticks 90 degrees down to keep it from turning, but this one doesn't appear to have that. Now we'll get our socket and ratchet on it. Believe it or not, I'm actually just using this camera to help me see that I'm on it because I can't see it from up top. There we go. Whew. The only thing left here, at least on the starter, is our B-movie wire, black and yellow. It's for the solenoid. Now I've got to put my transmission bracket back on so I can move this wire out of the way and then we'll give it a start and see what happens. And again, this step is really only necessary if, like me, you don't have the right carburetor for this and you have to sort of use what you got, which is still a Weber, but all the linkage is on the wrong side, which means I had to flip this transmission cable around. That's all right, though. It works. There we go. All right. Battery cable time. Right. I am not going to worry about snugging these cables up yet until we know that the starter works. We're just going to push them on and check our stuff out. All right, everybody. Take a sip of coffee for good luck. I'm going to close this door. So that way we don't get that dreaded whiny beep when we do this. Lights are coming on. Woo! All right. It's all fun and games till somebody loses a starter. All right, everybody. I'm going to let that thing warm up because I hadn't run in a couple days. And uh, you go try this at home if you want to. And get back to me. Let me know in the comments how it works out for you. Till then, I'll see you next time.